spray of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers will kick it off for the West Division team, and he puts it deep. Back there, a couple of excellent return men. This is Johnny Shepard, the rookie of the year from Hamilton, number 17. Daryl Moyer of the Calgary Stampeders is there to stop him at the 10-yard line, holding that return to seven yards following a 62-yard kick by Kennard. And the offense for the East comes onto the field to get this first quarter underway, led by Conridge Holloway at quarterback, Skip Walker of Ottawa, Johnny Shepard of Hamilton, the running backs. The receivers, what an excellent group. Keith Baker of Hamilton, Terry Greer of the Argos, Ron Robinson from Montreal, Emmanuel Colbert of the Argos. And the offensive line, led by Shenley winner, Rudy Phillips at that right guard position. First and 10, we're just underway. BC Place Stadium in Vancouver. Conridge Holloway quickly looks for Terry Greer, misfiring that time at the 20-yard line. Greer working against Saskatchewan Steve Dennis, number 25. And it'll bring up second down and 10 from the east 10-yard line. Terry Greer, record setter for the Toronto Argonauts this year with over 2,000 yards pass receiving on 113 catches, both of them CFL records. Just an average year. And also 16 catches in one football game, Dale. Another record in the CFL. With that man in the lineup, we're going to see some excitement here this afternoon. Shepard and Walker go in motion on second down and 10 to the right side. All the way down the middle, Terry Greer's favorite target has a first down for the East out of the 27-yard line. 17-yard gain for Terry Greer, a member of the all-CFL team for 1983, as you look at the West defensive lineup. And what a front four that is. Tony Norman, Randy Troutman, Mac Moore, and James Parker. The linebackers for the West. Vince Goldsmith, who led the CFL in sacks with 20. He's on the outside along with James West of Calgary. Danny Bass of the Stampeders, the middle linebacker. First down East, 27-yard line. Holloway getting good protection, coming back into the middle again is Terry Greer working against Steve Dennis. And he's out at the 40-yard line for a gain of 13 and another first down for the East Division. Well, I'm sure, Dale, as we talked about before the ball game, you're going to see the ball in the air almost every play. Just an excellent combination from Holloway to Greer. They've been familiar with each other, obviously, all year long. And Conrad rolled a bit to his left, came back and hit Greer to the weak side. Got man-to-man -man coverage. Terry Greer was twice the Offensive Star of the Week in 1983, weeks number 7 and number 18. The pitch to Skip Walker, the CFL rushing leader for the second straight year, and he is wrapped up after a gain of close to four yards on the play. David Shaw of the Bombers was there, number 36, as well as Tony Norman, number 55, also of the Bombers. Not really a great play offensively for the Eastern squad, but they got Rudy Phillips, the Shenley Award winner, out in front just a bit late that time. Watch him as he comes out here, number 67. That's what any back in his league would want, is to have him out in front of you. He does get a good block on Goldsmith to turn it up inside. Goldsmith wearing sweater number 87 instead of his more familiar 78. Of course, Mac Moore, a defensive tackle, wears 78 for the BC Lions, and that's what he's wearing today. Second down and six deep drop for Holloway. Looking back into the middle, tipped away from Emmanuel Colbert by Richie Hall, the rookie from the Calgary Stampeders. David Shaw also there covering for the West Division. That brings up third down, and Bernie Ruoff will come in to punt for the East Division. Yeah, we should cover just for the folks around the country this number situation. There were a number of conflicts, obviously, East and West, where people had worn the same number throughout the course of the year on various on their own ball clubs, and the way they did it was through seniority. Mac Moore and Vince Goldsmith, of course, both wore 78 during the course of the year. They're both three-year veterans, so they had to flip a coin. Bernie Ruoff led the CFL in number of punts in 1983 with 150. It's a good kick away. Coming down to Richie Hall, number 26, and the Stampeders along the sideline. Forced out of bounds right at the 35-yard line by Daryl Nicholson of the Argos. 11-yard return. There's no score in this Players Association All-Star game, and we'll be right back. You're the best in the league. All right, let's go, guys. Let's go split right, blue nine, quick out on one. On one, right here. All right, it's first down for the West Division. You heard Warren Moon in the huddle, 35-yard line. The outstanding player in 1983 in the Canadian Football League, Warren Moon at quarterback. First possession of the game for the West. It's almost picked off by Leroy Paul of the Argos, number four. The pass intended for number 70, Brian Kelly of the Eskimos. Leroy
Troy Paul had four interceptions during the regular season. Timing was off just a bit, and that's a little surprising. <laughs> Warren Moon works with Brian Kelly all year long. However, these offenses have not had much time to prepare. There are a couple of things that the defenses are not going to do. One of them is blitz in, uh, in this ball game, just because the offenses have not had that much time to prepare. Second down and 10. Moon is almost intercepted again, this time by Delbert Fowler, number 52 of the Concords. Rolling inside Brian Kelly again. And that'll bring up a quick third down in a punting situation for the West Division All-Stars as they're unable to move the football. Say, Frank, one thing I'm wondering about, maybe you can tell us, with the two quarterbacks, Moon and Holloway, now, they're liable to go to their receivers that they're most familiar with, the players they play with all year long. And that's going to give that defense a bit of an advantage, at least until the quarterbacks move off it, isn't it? Well, if there is an advantage, maybe it lies in the West, Bill, only because Moon has both Tom Scott and Brian Kelly to throw to, whereas Conrad's main receiver, of course, is Terry Greer. I think he'll go to all of them before the ball game's over. Howard Fields on the return. He's from the Hamilton Tiger Cats and downfield quickly, holding the return to absolutely nil after a 50-yard punt by Louis Pisaglia. Moyer, Monk, and Pankratz were all down there. Fields didn't have any chance at all. James Parker, I believe, was the first contact, number 40. Let's take a look. They call him quick. Right, it was Parker and Bonk who got to Howard Fields, and of course Basaglia was the leading punter in terms of average all season long, 50.1, and that one exactly a 50-yard punt. First down for the East, the second time they've had the ball, their own 25-yard line, no score, under 11 minutes remaining in the opening quarter. Holloway looking for Tolbert, knocked away by all-CFL safety, Paul Bennett, number 27 of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Well, that's great defense. You see Vince Goldsmith, number 87. He was also all the way back there from that linebacking spot. He had dropped almost 20 yards. Paul Bennett, of course, the Shenley winner, is the outstanding Canadian player in 1983. So far, Conrad Holloway has tried throwing the ball five times, completed two of them to Terry Greer. And the receivers, intended receivers, on each occasion have been Toronto Argonauts. Greer and Tolbert, second down and 10 from the 25. Holloway with the look back, going for Ron Robinson. Bennett was in line for the interception, and Larry Crawford broke the play up. Crawford, of course, led the CFL in interceptions with 12 during the regular season, and he thought oh, he had Crawford one there. came from a long way away, as you'll see. And Paul Bennett, as you mentioned, had this measured for an interception. Bennett Bennett almost, or Crawford sorry. almost comes down with it, though. Bennett, number 27, got hey. Almost one-hands it. <laughs> That's right. Ron Robinson of the Concords, the intended receiver. Bennett has dropped back deep with Richie Hall as Bernie Ruov lifts a towering punt. Bennett backing up to his own 27-yard line. Finds a seam as only Paul Bennett is able to do. The all-time CFL punt return later brings it out to the 40. 48-yard kick, 13-yard return. Still no score in this Players Association All-Star game, and we're back in a moment. Kicker, putter, field goal, kicker, everything, Bernie Roth. Bernie, they're cheating on you a little bit out there. I can't believe it. They promised me all week they wouldn't rush me, and they're bringing four or five guys up the middle already. I even bombed some drinks during the week, and then they lied to me. I can't believe it. Now, tell me, how about the intensity of that game, though? I think you're going to see it pick up as we go along. You've seen some big defensive plays already, and east is west, eh? Let's face it, we won the Grey Cup this year. Now we're going to go home with the All-Star game. Thank you. The West Division has the ball for the second time. The hit pass to Mervyn Fernandez. And he is tracked down right at the line of scrimmage. I believe that was Gary Doolin, number 69 of the Ottawa Rough Riders, who got outside there from number 68, rather, from the tackle spot. As we take a look at the West Division offensive lineman, Warren Moon, the outstanding player in the country, the starting quarterback. John Henry White is starting along with Ray Krause because of the injury to Winnipeg's Willard Reeves. Brian Kelly, Mervyn Fernandez, the wide receivers, Chris DeFrance, Tom Scott inside. And John Bonk centers that West Division All-Star offensive line. Second down, about a nine and a half yard to go situation for the West. Moon with the rollout action will run it. Puts his head down. Daryl Nicholson stops him at the 49, which will be about a yard short of the first down. They're going to go for it, too, from the Western bench. Cal Murphy sends out the short yardage team. And that's Greg Feger and Glenn Jackson who come out at blocking Fernandez. Well, this is a little bit of a luxury you can afford maybe in this All-Star game that you wouldn't normally see a 
Team Gamble on their own 49-yard line. This early in the ball game, you saw Warren Moon. Okay, let's go split left. 45x on one. On one, right? You're coming straight. Seventy-two. Ray Krause has the first down for the West Division. Out to the 52-yard line. Third and one gamble for the West with 8.15 remaining in the opening quarter. They sustain the drive, getting closer to midfield. Ray Krause, of course, the rookie from the Calgary Stampeders. The initial first down for the West Division. Eastern Division has picked up two first downs so far. Going on first down with the pitch to Ray Krause, and he's got a gain of a couple up to about the 53-yard line. William Mitchell of the Argonauts, number 39, makes the stop. It'll bring up second and long for the West. If the West has to punt, fellas, keep your eye out for a formation that Bob Vespasiani is working on here. They will not go to a huddle. I don't know if you picked it out the first time when they punted. They're just going to go straight up on the ball and line up for the kick. He says that way they can tell easier if they've got enough men in the field. <laughs> Second and nine for the West. Out of time Wide open. Throw. This time it's Brazley who should have had the interception. Last time Moon tried to throw out to that flat area. Leroy Paul almost picked it off. The intended receiver was Ray Krause, who had slid out of the backfield. And watch Brazley move up quickly, number two. Well, this is one of the reasons that Carl Brazley was picked the defensive player of the Great Cup last week. An outstanding afternoon he had that day. <laughs> Almost had six points there. Brazley drops back deep now along with Howard Fields and Hamilton. Warren Moon is one out of four so far this afternoon. We'll take a look at Lou Pasaglia. Beautiful punt by Lou Pasaglia. Waiting for Fields at the six-yard line. And they try the reverse and it's cut down immediately. Fumble. Wild West, James West, number 58, made the hit right at the goal line. The ball popped loose, but they're ruling the ball dead at the one-yard line. The pitch from Fields to Brazley. What a great shot. These guys came to play, that's for sure. Watch his hit. East is going to take over the football, but at their own one-yard line. 51-yard punt, minus five on the return. First down for the East. Right in the shadows of the goalpost. There's no score here at BC Place Stadium in the Players Association All-Star Game. And we'll be back in a moment. We've translated all the plays. These are for Roy Ann. First down, East Division, one-yard line. Conrad Holloway, the quarterback. Behind his center, Larry Titley, and there will be a sack and a safety on the play. Dave Finnell, number 65 of the Eskimos, will be right up the middle and giving Holloway absolutely no chance at all to get away. And we have our first scoring play of the afternoon. Let's take a look at the big one known throughout his career as Dr. Death. Larry Titley uh, of the Eastern squad, the offensive center, had split out to the right side as soon as that ball was snapped. Team number 55 move out of the way, and Fennell just totally ignored him and went in and got the first two points in this football game. Dave Fennell, 10-year veteran for the Edmonton Eskimos, was told will retire after this football game. Puts the West in front, 2-0 with the safety touch, the sack on Conrad Holloway in the end zone. And now the Eastern Division will have to kick off from their own 35-yard line. That'll bring Bernie Rue off into the ball game, and the West drops two men back deep, Richie Hall and Larry Crawford. How about that, Dale? If we have to pick the offensive star of the game, we have to pick Dave, Dave Fennell. Fennell. Right. <laughs> that would be a beauty. No, oh, Warren, the thing about the 62-63 on the first and arrowed out on the... Yeah. To the wide field. Air one out. All right. Of course, listening to Cal Murphy, the, the big Blue Bomber coach, handling the West squad this afternoon. And he said the right side of the field. And, of course, that could possibly mean a moon to DeWalt, or a moon to Fernandez attempt. Here's Richie Hall, number 26 of the Stampeders, on the return. 
gets out to about the 34-yard line. Daryl Nicholson, the rookie middle linebacker of the Argos, who is an all-star this year, holds the return 18 yards. Let's go to Peter. Well, Peter's had a little mic problem there. Too bad. We'd like to hear Big Dave Fennell tell us how he's leading the scoring here this afternoon. <laughs> Two nothing for the West over the East. First down for the West near the 35. Huh. Boone with the roll left throwing. It's complete to Chris DeFrance on the deflection. And he's out to midfield and a first down stopped by Howard Fields of Hamilton. The pass intended for Ray Kraus went off his hands right to Chris DeFrance of Saskatchewan for a 21 yard gain. <laughs> got an isolated shot thanks to Freddie Fleming on Christian Brands winds up with the football quite by accident Ray Kraus just tips the ball forward to the great Saskatchewan receiver first down at midfield for the West three-year veteran of Saskatchewan all three years he's gone over a thousand yards in receiving Christian Brands number 74 gives the West first down at midfield Ray Kraus uh, the trap up the middle gets back to the line of scrimmage and that's as far as he's going it'll be second down and ten let's go to Bill Conrad, how much are you making up in the huddles out there, and how much is all set before from the game plan? Well, we've got a, a pretty basic uh, scheme as far as the pass protection, but as far as calling the individual routes, I'm pretty much calling them. Yeah. Well, I call one, and they run the complimentary, so they've gone over that all, all week. If I was calling out, the inside guy runs the camera. Basic stuff. All right, I'll be back to you in a moment. Let's see what happens on the play. Gary Doolin in Ottawa made the tackle on first down. It's second and ten. Moon finds a John Henry White, the safety valve, just sliding out of the backfield, and immediately he's hit by Daryl Nicholson of the Argos, number 72, and White is held to a gain of just a couple, so that'll bring up third down for the West Division. All right, Conrad, you wanted to ask you now, what do you think you can do against the defense? What are you going to try to do when you go out? Well, I'm, from being from Toronto, I think we can throw the ball. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they're, they're limited to two coverages, and as a quarterback, that's a plus. But you got a lot of good athletes playing those two coverages. But with, with running backs like Skip Walker and uh, Johnny Shepard and Ferdinand, you got to give them the ball every now and then. You'll do more running than you do normally in the double blue. Uh, yes, they will. I won't. Sagley <laughs> gets a good bounce off a bad kick taken by Harry Skipper of the Concord, number 26. He stepped out of bounds at the 19-yard line, so that's where the East will go on offense after a 38-yard punt and a return of four. Those rats are playing too deep. <laughs> <laughs> 442 remains in this first quarter and as we understand it both of these coaches mm -hmm. will be changing quarterbacks uh, each quarter so you'll see Roy DeWalt and Isaac west and east in that second quarter presumably right now it's the east trailing two nothing with the football at their own 19 we have four and a half remaining in the opening quarter Shepard and Walker are the running backs Walker takes the handoff from Holloway, hit by Danny Bass and Tony Norman after a gain of maybe three yards out to about the 22. That'll bring up second down and seven to CFL's rushing leader. That's his total for 1983. He, of course, has led the CFL in rushing the past two years, and he is a member of the all-CFL team for 1983, as well as Johnny Shepard. I just talked to uh, head coach Al Bruno with his uh, Hamilton Tiger Cat coaching staff, he concurs with what you just finished saying, Frank, and that is that they will change quarterbacks at the end of each quarter. And in fact, Roy DeWall is warming up already on the west side. Keith Baker of Hamilton takes the pass from Conrad Holloway, and he is stopped right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll bring up third down, and the East will have to punt the football. Good defensive coverage provided by the west. Big very Crawford of the BC Lions up there very, very quickly. Watch it. He's number 28. Right on, Baker. Absolutely nowhere to go. Crawford, of course, another member of the All-CFL team for 83. As you look at Baker on the sidelines, along with Holloway, Crawford, the leading interceptor in the regular season with 12 of them. They've got the right return set up. Ruoff hangs this one high to Paul Bennett at the 37. Bennett out to the 50-yard line. Skip Walker and Harry Skipper team up to make the tackle. 50-yard kick and a turn of 13 for Paul Bennett. 
outstanding Canadian player of 1983, and of course the all-time CFL punt return leader. And a lot of fun guy too, isn't he? A great sure personality. Is. He got up at the FRC breakfast during Grey Cup week and thanked all of the press on behalf of the Chenley Award nominees. Did a great job. Two ninety-six. Two ninety-six. <laughs> Bob Foley centers to Warren Moon on first and ten. Wide open, Chris DeFrance of Saskatchewan at the East 45-yard line. First down, Perry Skipper, number 26, the rookie from the Concords, making the tackle. Josh coming back. This is New Orleans. I write 55 search on one. On one, right? In the flat, down here. 55, sir. That means find your own open spot, and I'll find you with the football. 277. 277. <laughs> Knocked down at the line of scrimmage by Franklin King, number 61, from the Toronto Argonauts. Remember the Grey Cup champions? Four-year pro and a first-year Argonaut. Watch him knock this one down right at the line of scrimmage. Trying to hit Tommy Scott on that quick look in. He was trying to search for that open spot, which you heard him stay in the huddle I'd like to remind viewers that lotto 649 will be seen at half time so stay tuned for that two and a half minutes remaining in the opening quarter two nothing the west leading the east second down from the east 45 chris de france is open and breaking the play up nicely howard fields of the tiger cats number 16 nice job that time three-year veteran out of baylor First field goal attempt of the afternoon coming up, fellas. Trevor Kenner who is splitting duties with Lupus Saglia trots on the field. Frank, I'm a little surprised at the fact that they're not completing more passes with no blitzing, no great rush in the quarterback. They've got the time, they've got the receivers, but uh, the defense seems to be controlling it. Well, Bill, I think the reason for that is those outstanding athletes they've got in those defensive back positions. And also, of course, the offensive people have not had that much opportunity to work together. It does take the offense a little more time to coordinate. Pankratz holding. This would be Kennard's longest field goal of the year, but he didn't get it up, and it bounces into the end zone to Howard Fields of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and Fields will go absolutely nowhere. There's a lot of white jerseys down there representing the West Division team, and that'll go as a single point for Kennard and the West, and they now lead it 3-0 over the East with 147 remaining in the opening quarter. Kennard connected on 80% of his field goal attempts in 1983, and that is an outstanding statistic. He has the same center th centering the ball back to him, but I would think, Frank, that it might make a difference uh, with a different holder. For this sure. being a BC crowd, they're not too happy either about Kennard kicking. They think Basaglia, of course, is the man who should be kicking field goals. Well, Bill, they weren't really booing. They're just hollering for Lou, and you hear that quite often here at BC <laughs> Place. Lou, Lou. They yeah. wanted him. For sure. You saw Roy DeWalt loosening up. It's first down for the East at the 45, which was the line of scrimmage on the missed field goal. Shepard swinging out of that backfield one-on-one -on -one with Larry Crawford, and Crawford forces him out of bounds at the 48-yard line for a gain of three yards. You know, when you look at Shepard and Walker in that backfield for the Eastern Division, you're talking about a couple of guys who had over 4,500 yards total offense. Watch the isolated shot of Larry Crawford as he comes up on a great running back. One on one, he plays it well. I'll tell you, that, that shows the athletic ability that we were talking about from Larry Crawford. In three years with the BC Lions, he's led the team in interceptions each and every year. He's got 24 interceptions for those three years. Second down and seven. Holloway's arm is hit at the line. Dave Finnell has an interception. <laughs> Dave Finnell, who got the safety earlier in the game. Tony now, Harmon, I believe, hit Holloway's head. And <laughs> David, the offensive player of the game, comes up again. <laughs> David hasn't touched the football this much in the last five years. He all won't forget this game. All of a sudden, here it comes. <laughs> Didn't know what to do with it. Now, would you want to, to tackle him? Would you want to tackle him? <laughs> Absolutely. I have Big Dave with me right now. Now, first you get the first points of the ball game. Now you come up. How many interceptions is that in your career? Uh, that's my second, actually. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to be a threat to take over for one of the defensive oh, no, backs. Larry Highbaugh's record safe. <laughs> Well, Fidel gives the offense the ball. First down at the East 48-yard line. 3-0, West leading the East. We're into the last minute of the opening quarter. Boone wants to go long for Fernandez. It's not well thrown. And it's knocked away by Harry Skipper. 
Warren a little upset with himself because uh, that ball seemed to slip out of his hands and just fluttered downfield because Fernandez had a couple of steps on Skipper initially. Well, just a little bit concerned about Warren's elbow, just how much it's been hurting him. You know that during the latter part of the season, he was having trouble with it, in fact, all year long, and there was some question mark as to whether he would be able to physically play in this ball game. Perry Skipper knocked it down, helped out by Ken McEachern on the coverage. The Argonaut safety moving over, and it's second down and 10 from the East 48. Good pass protection by both offensive lines so far. Reminder again, of course, instances. no blitzing. Do a little stunning. Tom Scott takes the pass, is hit immediately. He'll be very close to a first down. Felix Wright of the Hamilton Tiger Cats making the stop on Scotty. Good isolated shot of Scott just going down on a very quick breakout. He's trying to pick up that 10 yards, and I think he does get just about 10 and a half, but where the ball is spotted, it's going to be very, very close. Paul Bennett complaining here in the west sideline that they were playing a too deep zone. I guess Frank got to no-no or something. <laughs> they have restricted the defense in terms of the number of defenses they can play. As you heard Conrad Holloway explaining to Bill Stevenson, it is going to be just short of a first down, but the west obviously will gamble once again as they bring in Glenn Jackson and Greg Fieger, their short yardage offensive team. They already gambled once on third and over a yard to go and easily got the first down. This will be third and just a little bit at the east 38 and a half yard line and we have time for one more play here in the opening quarter yeah it's interesting what peter was just talking about and that is the fact that as far as bernie ruoff was concerned the defense of the west was cheating a little bit by rushing them too i got a feeling that things are going to be thrown out the window and these plays and these defenses they're not supposed to use are suddenly going to come into the vogue if that'll help them win once the game starts they want to win it no matter what the situation Last play of the opening quarter, John Henry White takes the handoff from Warren Moon, and he struggles his way to the 35-yard line for a gain of about four yards and a first down. So the West will maintain the drive when we come back. At the end of the first quarter, the score is West 3 and the East nothing. We'll return with the second quarter in just a moment. Dale Isaac with Frank Rigney, Peter Young, Bill Stevenson, the entire CTV crew coming to you live from BC Place Stadium in Vancouver as we get the second quarter underway in this Players Association All-Star Game. The West is leading the East 3-0, and the West on a drive at the East 35-yard line. Warren Moon, the quarterback, everybody in motion on first and ten. Looking for Chris to France. The ball was thrown low at the 23-yard line. France just unable to come up with it. It'll be second down and 10. Lots of motion, as you saw the Winnipeg Blue Bombers using late in the season. Just a little bit surprised that Cal Murphy has uh, allowed Warren Moon to stay in the ball game. He was supposed to be going with DeWalt at the start of the second quarter. As you saw, France was open a little quicker, but the ball delivered low by Warren. Second and ten now. We're just into the second quarter of this ball game. The West leads the East in the CFL Players Association All-Star Game. Three nothing. Dave Finnell has been the star. He got the safety for the first two points and also came up with an interception. And set up a field goal attempt that was low for single by Kenner. Moon delivers to Tommy Scott for the first down inside the 20-yard line. Ken McKecker in the safety from the Argos making the tackle on Scott. 17-yard game. That puts the ball at the 18-yard line statistically in the first quarter. You can see that both offensive units did not move the ball that well. 64 total yards for the West and 40 for the East. Holloway, the starting quarterback for the East, Moon the starter and is still in there for the West. Looking at first and 10 from the East Division's 18-yard line. The give is to Ray Kraus, number 32 of the Calgary Stampeders through the middle, fumbles the football, it's close at the goal line, touchdown, West. Dave Kersinger of the Stampeders scores a touchdown, and linemen are really playing a big role in this ball game. First it's Dave Finnell, and now Dave Kersinger getting in on the scoring for the West. Fumbled into the end zone by Ray Kraus of the Stamps, recovered by teammate Dave Kersinger, the six-year veteran from UBC. William Mitchell making the hit from behind on Krause. The ball pops forward. Pick number 69 in the end zone. Touchdown for the West Division. 
just a great job by that offensive line of the Western squad. If we can bring that back to the start, I'll show you a great cross block by the West. You'll see John Bonk, the offensive center, blocking out to his left side, and Roger Aldeg of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders going up behind him. That's what created the hole for Krause. We'll come back and take another look at that later as you see Trevor Kennard converting the touchdown by Dave Kersinger, giving the West a 10 0 lead over the East, and we're coming right back in just a moment. He used to play quarterback, so it's not his first touchdown, but Dave, that was, uh, I guess, a big thrill in your pro career. Well, certainly my first touchdown as a professional. I Gonna have to talk to Ray Crowso and get the dance down. I didn't have the dance, but uh, I gave some of the people up here the ball. So you Calgary guys stick together. He fumbles it up to you. Well, it was a design play. It's something that we thought the East couldn't cover, and uh, <laughs> it tucked me out a little bit there to go that full eight yards. But thanks, Crowsey. Hey, it's I'm glad right. you got that. I'm glad you saved me on that. Yeah. Well, we <laughs> went working on that, huh? Hey, we worked on it yesterday, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, all day. All hey, day. we gonna do it one more time when we yeah. get that. Yeah. If you can get that once more, then I'll believe you yeah. planned it that <laughs> way. If I could, I'd just like to say hi to my family. My mom, she'll kill me if I don't say I never get interviewed. And my friends back home. <laughs> I like to say, hey, I like to say hello to all the people back in Calgary. You're doing the job so far. Okay, next year uh, we'll bring one home for Calgary. All right. Thank you, fellas. Dave Kersinger, of course, getting the touchdown. The first player selected back in the 1978 college draft. And Calgary Stampeders. Helps to give the West a 10-0 lead over the East. And after Kennard's kickoff to Denny Ferdinand, it's first down for the East near the 20-yard line. Chris Isaac of the Ottawa Rough Riders is now at quarterback for the East, replacing the starter, Conrad Holloway. And he'll return in the third quarter. Isaac in trouble, hauled down by Randy Trumpman, number 62 of the Calgary Stampeders. And the Stampeders are becoming very dominating in this football game right at the moment they teamed up for that last touchdown and now Trotman with the tackle for a five-yard loss I'll tell you one thing though Dale the guy that really made that play was James Parker number 40 as he showed that great quickness to come to the outside and make sure that Isaac has that great running ability did not get to the outside watch him number 40 stop it there you'll see how he sets up right there and turns the play back to the inside where he gets help Good eye, Frank. Troutman makes the tackle. It's second down and about 15 yards to go. The draw play to Denny Ferdinand from the Montreal Concords is stopped by Parker and Mac Moore, number 78, after a gain of about two. That'll bring up third and long. Bernie Ruoff will punt. Let's take a look once again at James Parker. They flip-flop him from right to left, as you can see, working against Kevin Powell of the Ottawa Rough Riders, and he just is very, very difficult to block. Short, but extremely strong and obviously quick. Ruoff will have to punt from about the five-yard line. Richie Hall and Paul Bennett are the return men. Big rush from James West coming from the outside. Ruoff hangs it high, moving up. Richie Hall at the 50. Slips one tackle now as their blocker out there. He's to the east. 47-yard line, stopped by Nicaraki and Ken McKecker, and good run back by Richie Hall of the Stampeders, and gives the West good field position, and they lead it 10-0. We'll be back in just a moment. One of the reasons that uh, they have All-Star Games, of course, to promote the Players Association. Warren Moon, one of those who showed up, and many expected you might not, and you might have the first injury of the game. It doesn't look that serious, though, just a little muscle pull. Yeah, I put a little muscle in my lower back. Uh, I think it's just from not having any really, really hard contact or hard running around during the week. And I had to make a quick movement out there and just kind of pulled a little bit. Let's enjoy this game. Okay, thank you. Roy DeWald has now replaced Warren Moon at quarterback for the West, and he is intercepted by William Mitchell on his very first pass attempt. Mitchell brings it back into West Division territory where he's stopped by John Bonk, number 43. A return of 22 yards for the East Division by William Mitchell, who had two interceptions during the regular season and comes up with a nice one here. Well, he had a lot of time as he went, had that quick roll to the left and then turned back, and he, I guess he just didn't see Mitchell because he threw it right to him. Intended receiver was Krista France, I believe, downfield, number 74. First big turnover for the Eastern squad as they try to get back in this ball game. They trail 10-0. First down at the West 52. Chris Isaac, the quarterback, Ferdinand and Shepard. Isaac fumbles the ball on the snap from center. He picks it up and gets to the 50 for a gain of a couple. Danny Bass is there to stop him for the West Division defensively. It'll bring up second down and eight. If you look at William Mitchell of the Argonauts. His second year with Toronto. What a great year he had, too was with the Ottawa Rough Riders for a while. Frank, you played in this league for 10 years. You were an all-star seven times, but 
never had the opportunity to play in an all-star game. No, I didn't. That's one of the things I regret in my uh, CFL career. This would have been a lot of fun. Second down and about eight yards to go. Chris Isaac, deep drop pressure from Parker. And they whistle the play down right at the 51-yard line. Well, James Parker becoming a dominant part of this football game as he does so often for those Edmonton Eskimos. John? So it's third down and long for the East as they're unable to take advantage of the interception by William Mitchell. And we'll take a look at Bernie Ruoff punting once more. This time, Richie Hall drops back deep. Along with Winnipeg Blue Bombers, David Shaw, number 36. Shaw replacing his teammate from Winnipeg, Paul Bennett, on the punt return. The kick by Ruoff, it's a good one. Aiming for the far side. Shaw inside the 10-yard line. Shaw is out to about the 17. So the West Division will start deep after a 50-yard punt by Bernie. And a return of eight yards by David Shaw. 10-0 lead for the West over the East. Touchdown for the West scored by Dave Kersinger after Ray Cross had fumbled into the end zone. Kersinger recovered. Dave Finnell opened the scoring with a sack on Conrich Holloway in the end zone in the first quarter. Trevor Kennard has a single off a missed field goal and a con convert as well on Kersinger's touchdown. How about that, Dale? The only sign that his prejudice toward one football club is for the Eskimos here at BC Play. Roy DeWalt hits James Murphy of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, number 12. And he's stopped by three Eastern defenders at about the 24-yard line. Murphy, of course, usually wears jersey number 21. Wearing number 12 for this game because John Pankratz of the Lions wears 21. Al Bruno, the head coach of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And his staff coaching the Eastern Division All-Stars. And, of course, Al Bruno, named the interim coach. Larry Titley joins in the conversation. Bruno will be talking with management when he gets back to Hamilton next week, about 1984. Roy DeWall on second down and four. Chased out of bounds by linebacker Rick Soietta, number 75 of the Ottawa Rough Riders. He's got enough for the first down. <laughs> Roy was going to get that first down, and he was also going to get out of bounds. I'll tell you, the BC fans love it, too. Roy faked like he was going to throw that football up in the stands. I think he disappointed a few people here this afternoon that he didn't do so. Reminder again to our viewers, uh, across the country, Lotto 649 will be seen at halftime. And we have 10 minutes remaining in the second quarter. First down for the West, 27-yard line. Duvall looking for Fernandez, his favorite receiver all season long, and he's got it near the 34 and pushed back. Felix right into the ball game along with Daryl Wilson. Fernandez has a gain of about seven yards, second down and three coming up. That offense of yours hasn't been working at all. What's the problem? Well, uh, they're running a couple of stunts uh, out there, line stunts, and we're having uh, some trouble with our pass protection. But uh, we've been ironing the, uh, the wrinkles out here. I think uh, we're going to get it cranked up in a minute. Can you run against that defense? Yeah, we think so. Uh, the coaches came up to me and said we're going to try to run the ball a little bit, and uh, maybe that'll tighten them down a little bit, and then we can go back to the air. It was Fernandez left, taking the pass from DeWalt. Now it's Fernandez to the right, and he has another first down for the West at the 42-yard line, that time stopped by Harry Skipper. Very close coverage by Harry Skipper. I wouldn't be surprised to see Roy and Irv try to combine on a stop-and-go pattern or something to try to hit deep against the Eastern squad. You cannot cover Irv too close. No, you can't. Warren Moon had him deep there once in the first quarter, but he fluttered the ball to him. Skipper was able to break it up. The ball to Tommy Scott, number 22. Watched closely by Howard Fields as he steps out of bounds at the 54-yard line on the east side of the field. Well, Dale, just as any good quarterback would do, they won't listen to us. They'll take what the defense gives them. Exactly. First down by Tommy Scott. DeWalt has now completed five in a row after being picked off by William Mitchell. He's completed all here's six. Just one to the wrong color jersey. Uh, let's see if he's always oh, going lucky. Here's the hey, here's the quarterback throwback. Here it is. DeWalt being an intended receiver then. Don't forget that. <laughs> well, he managed to gain a yard on the play. That one just got messed up a little bit, didn't it? 
Well, Rick Moore was in there so quickly on behalf of the Eastern squad to put pressure on Roy DeWalt. Just no time to do anything. Gary Doolin of the Ottawa Rough Riders also in there. And Greg Marshall, number 66. <laughs> Roy had no time to dance. That'll bring up second down and nine. I'd like to make mention that uh, Players Association Executive Director Steve Mazurk designed these uh, uniforms, and they're very smart uniforms. And the, of course, the players get to keep the jerseys after the ball game. They're very thrilled about that. Chris the friends, I'm going to squeeze it. That'll bring up third down, and the West Division team will have to punt the ball away. Carl Brazley providing the coverage on Chris de France. Say, Frank, I haven't heard you mention one thing about the weather outside. All those Grey Cup people came in here last week. They didn't see the mountains. They didn't even believe there were mountains here, except those who've been to Vancouver before. But here we are today, and it is just gorgeous outside. It has been beautiful and clear ever since the Grey Cup game ended. It has been a little cool, and these teams have practiced outside all week until yesterday. But it's unimportant that BC plays. Lou Pasaglia is in the punt. Three men back deep for the East. Harry Skipper of the Concords will take it from the seven-yard line. Spins his way out to about the 15-16 yard line where he's stopped by James Parker of the Eskimos. 7-17 remaining second quarter. 10-0 lead for the West over the East. We're coming right back. East Division side of the field. The Hamilton coaching staff and trainers are handling the East Division team and the Hamilton Tiger Cats want to wish a happy birthday to George Scotty Wright, who's 71 years young today. And Scotty, of course, is the assistant equipment manager of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Right now, it's the East Division offense on the field at the 17-yard line. Chris Isaac, the quarterback. West leading 10-0. Johnny Shepard of the Tiger Cats, number 17. The CFL's outstanding rookie takes it to about the 20 for a gain of three yards. Gentlemen, if you'd allow me to, since this is the time for birthday wishes, uh, just so happens that both of my youngsters are celebrating their birthdays today. Jason turned 13 today. Brandon turned five. So I'd like to say happy birthday to them, if you don't mind. You also notice since Chris Isaac's coming to this ball game, they, the Eastern squad has run almost every play. I'm sure they won't here at second and seven. Covered was Ron Johnson by David Shaw. Shaw easily breaking the play up and forcing a third down punting situation for the East. Well, that was great coverage because he came back to that football and Shaw came right back with him. David Shaw, nine-year pro out of Prairie View A&M and, of course, 1983, his first year with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. He was the defensive star of the week during 1983. That was back in week number two. He forces the East to punt the ball away, and Bernie Ruoff again will kick. Paul Bennett back in as a return man along with Richie Hall. Ruoff has kicked so well this afternoon. He powers another one. Bennett right at the 40-yard line. Surrounded, and he goes down. No place to go that time. He's got a return of a couple and another 50-yard kick. Well, Bernie Ruoff has kicked the last four in a row, and they've all traveled 50 yards. First one was 42, his second one was 48, and then four in a row, 50-yard punts. And he's hanging them so high, the return men like Bennett aren't getting a lot of room to maneuver. Quick out or hitch, you know. I mean, he thought he gives a lot of room. Quick out, quick out. First down for the West at their own 42. Kelly and Murphy in motion. 297, 297. That's him. <laughs> The wall is getting lots of time and going deep for Brian Kelly. Kelly had got a step or two on Harry Skipper of the Concords. You Little saw Roy, who was under pressure the last time that the West had that football, keep both of his offensive backs in there to help on that protection, and he had a lot of time to throw the football. Roy a little bit upset with himself, I'm sure, because he thought he... Let's go, right? 80 Jet on one, ready? 80 Jet, that's a deep pattern once again, and once again, he's going to keep those backs in there to help protect him. Watch for it. Second down and 10 from the 42. Looking for Pankratz. And that pass is overthrown. 
And it'll bring a third down to the West Division. John Pankratz of the BC Lions, the intended receiver. Now in a slot back position. Four-year veteran out of Simon Fraser. Brian Kelly just comes up with the classic line so far. He walks to the bench and walks up to Cal Murphy and said, well, I gave him his chance to be a hero. I was open. <laughs> Roy DeWald heads to the bench. Brian Kelly, of course, one of three unanimous choices for the West Division All-Star team. The others being Larry Crawford and Matt Moore, both of the BC Lions. Masaglia's punt moving up to take it is Carl Brasley of the Argonauts, number two from the 26. Now he's got some room. Brasley is hauled down by Daryl Moyer of the Stampeders at the 45-yard line. Punt by Pisaglia traveled 42 yards and a return of 19. And the East will go on offense at their own 45. And we have five minutes remaining until halftime. The West leads at 10 nothing. Good return by Carl Brasley. He's a Eastern Division All-Star. Was a repeater from last year, but last year when he was with Ottawa, he made it as a quarterback. This time he made it for with Toronto as an inside halfback. Isaac wants to go long now, looking for Terry Greer. The Argos is open. He is gone. Terry Greer got in behind Steve Dennis for a 65-yard score, and the East finally gets on the board. Boy, did he ever clearly beat one of the best cornerbacks in the Canadian Football League, Steve Dennis. You don't even see him in your picture here. And a great throw by young Isaac to put the Eastern squad right back in this ballgame. Whoa, what a throw. 65-yard pass and run play. And that narrows the gap now between the two All-Star teams. Another look at it. Chris Isaac, a beautifully thrown football to Terry Greer, who obviously made some great moves to get that far in behind Steve Dennis who, as Frank said, is one of the best corners in the league. Certainly, deal man-to-man -man coverage. He's had an outstanding career. They leave him out there on, a, on his own against almost anybody, but we are beating badly. Kind of play we expected to see as Holloway holds for Bernie Ruoff's conversion attempt. It's now a 10-7 ball game with just under five minutes remaining. Let's go to Bill. Well, here's the man of the hour. Tell me, Terry, exactly how we set that up. Well, uh, we haven't thrown a pass deep all day. And, uh, of course, you know, they're just playing short and he was just relaxing us all year. He wasn't uh, really trying to get back. He was just relaxing. And I uh, just threw it out. I didn't know Chris throwing ball that far. <laughs> he surprised me. It was a great throw. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. He got it out there. Gary, yeah, yeah. what about getting into this game? Is it taking a little while to get the emotions flowing? Of course, it's a fun game. Everybody's like having a lot of fun. And you know, it's just, I don't want to be this much fun, I guess. Uh, the thing about you meet a lot of uh, players. You know, these guys are something else. They're really nice. All the guys are excellent athletes. You know? And good off the field. We're having a lot of fun. Terry? All Canadian, congratulations, and also Shanley finalists. Terry Greer scored eight touchdowns during the regular season, but Frank, it seems like every one of them was on a play similar to that. Big play, exciting play. Bernie Ruoff kicks it off, and that's Richie Hall in at the five-yard line on the return for the West Division. The little rookie for the Calgary Stampeders has got a big one. He's out across the 40-yard line. Gilbert Fowler, number 52 of the Concords, in on the tackle along with Ken Decker, number 24 yeah, from the Argos. From hey, run your reverse. Reverse it. <laughs> Murph said he just put a little excitement into it. Go ahead, Roy. 37-yard return by Richie Hall, and he brings it out to the 41-yard line. The wall at quarterback. Hey, we're missing somebody. <laughs> Count him out, Murphy. Right? Murphy's there. He just got to the huddle. That's a left 32-pound option reverse. At nine and one, ready? All right, that should be a reverse to the left side now. Counter option. There it is, James Murphy. Cuts it back. A good run by James Murphy, stopped by the safety McKechnie. First down, 52-yard line. 12-yard gain for the West Division. That looks like old folks Glenn Weir, number 64, that almost stopped that play, made Murphy turn back to the inside. But the East just did not have any help coming from the inside. Frank, doesn't a fellow like Glenn Weir make you think that maybe you quit 10 years too early? <laughs> I think he and I are the same age anyway. <laughs> I'm telling him. I'll tell him later. We, I don't want to deal with him today. Tommy Scott, Tommy. throwback to the quarterback, DeWalt. 
Takes the pass, steps out of bounds with it in front of Daryl Wilson, number 13 in <laughs> Toronto. 54 uh, yard line. Uh, there are fans around that can remember back to the Grey Cup when Leo Great. Lewis completed Great. that to Jimmy Van Pelt a couple of occasions. And Jim Van Pelt right here in Vancouver set the all time scoring record, which stood for some 20 years in a Grey Cup game. A play very similar to this. Tommy Scott. Tommy doesn't get set up very well. He kind of throws it off the wrong foot. The gain is only three yards, but a little excitement anyway. Second down and seven, just inside Eastern Division territory. Here comes that motion. Open is Ray Krause at the East 50, and he is cut down immediately by Delbert Fowler, number 52, from Montreal. They'll spot the ball at the 49. Short yardage, short yardage. Short yardage seven. We're going for it. All right. Three third and about a yeah, yard and a half to go. Jackson will go in as the blocker. Eight. Yeah. You heard Cal Murphy call for a toss on this side. The 48 toss is to the right, the 49 to the left. So we're trying to hear Roy DeWalt. Let's go. Go line left. 48 toss and one. Ready? All right. The toss to the right side of the short side of the field. 397. That's <laughs> Ray Krause, maybe on second effort he got the first down, but the initial hit stopped him after a gain of maybe half a yard, but he managed to lunge forward, and he'll be very close to the first down. We'll find out when we come back with the West leading by three. We'll return in just a moment. We have 301 remaining until halftime. Ray Krause did pick up the first down by little more than the length of the football. So the West has it first and 10 at the East 47. West leads it 10-7. Roy DeWalter, quarterback here in the second quarter for the West. Warren Moon started the ball game. Cal Murphy, the head coach, along with his Winnipeg Blue Bomber coaching staff, running the Western Division. I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you what. If we get about five to go here, let's run the draw. Let's <laughs> <laughs> Duald on first down, throwing deep into the middle, picked off by Ken McEachern of the Argonauts. And number 24 brings it back into Eastern Division territory. The second interception off Roy DeWald here in this quarter. And it's John Bonk in on the tackle along with Leo Branchard. McEachern brings it back a total of 26 yards after he intercepted five times during the regular season. Here's another look at it. Dale, as we're taking a look at that interception, the president of the Players Association has stepped into the booth with us. Ed Shalupka, and Ed, you must be very proud of the turnout of these players. They, uh, everybody that made this all-star squad has shown up to play here this afternoon. That's right, Frank. It is super. We have 100% attendance of all our players, which goes to show you that they really want the all-star game themselves. I think there's one thing you as the president want to pass along to the fans across Canada. It's not just the pension plan for the players that benefit from this game this afternoon, but there's a lot of charities that the Players Association are involved with. That's correct, such as the Variety Club, Special Olympics for the Handicap, it's Ronald McDonald House, it goes on and on. It's, it's just not for the players, it's, it's for the community at large here in BC, which is uh, a lot of charity. Eddie, thank you very much for stopping by with us, and good luck in the future with this All-Star Game. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. Almost set, right? On second and ten, Emmanuel Tolbert swinging out of the backfield. The pass was thrown low and right there for the West, providing coverage on Tolbert. Larry Crawford, number 28 of the BC Lions. James West, number 58 of Calgary, picked up the loose ball, thinking it might possibly have been a lateral, but that is not the case. It's third down and the East will have to put the ball away. Two and a half minutes remaining in the second quarter. The West on five, right 10 to seven. Hey, James, James West, the deal, the only player who has... Uh -huh. I yeah. Bernie Ruoff with another good kick into the end zone this time. David Shaw, number 36 of the Bombers, brings it out to about the seven or eight yard line. William Mitchell of the Argonauts there to make the tackle. And so the West will start deep following a 55 yard punt by Bernie Ruoff and a return of nine. 
As I was going to say, Dale, James West, the only player who has his name on both the front and back of his jersey, and uh, he's been inciting the crowd behind the Western bench to chant the Western term because that's his name. He's quite a character. <laughs> Roy DeWalt and the West Division offense. First down, old seven and a half yard line. Going deep for Brian Kelly, open in the middle. His first catch of the afternoon, and Kelly takes it into East Division territory. A gain of 47 yards for Brian Kelly. McEachern making the tackle. Just continually amazes everybody how wide open Brian Kelly gets. Watch this. A good throw by Roy DeWall as well. Brian had a good five yards on any of the defenders. Leroy Paul was a corner on that side who he had beaten to the inside. Brian. That's the kind of year that Brian Kelly had almost equivalent to Terry Greer. Well, he led the West Division in receiving. He Brian broke the Kelly old record. <laughs> was the rookie of the year back in 79. Big 47-yard gain, the draw to Ray Krause. And Krause gets in the side the 50-yard line to about the 49. McEachern again making the stop. I guarantee you Krause did that on his own. He looked like he might be stopped in the backfield, but he managed to get away from Gary Doolin. And he picks up five, second down. Okay, right? a minute 40 remaining in the second quarter. Wall's got the pass away, and it goes incomplete, trying to hit Ray Kraus against double coverage out there. DeWalt getting rid of the football because he was in big trouble from the front four of that Eastern Division defense, and that'll bring up third down. Rick Moore, number 76, at the top of your screen, was working against John Blaine, the big guy, 280 pounds from the BC Lions, and Moore really put the pressure on Roy DeWalt. DeWalt has great athletic skills himself and managed to avoid that rush right there. Little spinning move, but not time to throw the football properly. Almost a third interception by Roy DeWalt in the second quarter of this ball game. Yeah. And this will be a field goal attempt of 56 yards by Trevor Kennard. His longest during the regular season was 51. Pancras doing the holding. Another low kick by Kennard. Taken by Carl Brazley, number two, and he just goes down at about the 18-yard line. And I think this BC crowd is getting on the West Division team a little bit for Bisaglia not doing the place kicking. Well, I'm sure Lou will get his shot probably in the second half. Trev has not hit either one of his extremely long field goal attempts very well. Did not get the ball up in the air very well. Frank, that wasn't Cal Murphy's plans. He told us before the game that uh, he was going to stick with uh, Kennard for the placements throughout, but uh, as you say, he may change his mind. How about you? Oh, I know. Okay, well, let's get it up. Just get it up in the air now. Yeah. Okay. One of the rules, Trev. First down from the 18, Chris Isaac, the quarterback. Stepping up, finds Skip Walker, open down the sideline. Forced out of bounds by Steve Dennis. Walker was working against the linebacker James West, and he had him beaten by about five yards. Big first down, 47-yard gain. You'll see James West here, and that is a very tough assignment, trying to cover a back coming out of that backfield. He has to come all the way out to this side, and as Dale told you, he had a big lead on Wild West. James West, number 58. It's too much time to throw the football, and you'll see how far Walker's open. All the way down to the 45-yard line of the West, and the East is about to tie this ball game up. If they can move it a little further. The West got a 47-yard gain from Kelly, and the East will come right back, 47 yards. Skip Walker, Tony Norman trying to track him down, and he does from behind, and there'll be a loss of three on the play. Tony Norman will run down just about anybody. Number 55 of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Looks like he wanted to throw that football, Dale. Ron Johnson, number 73, was running a deep pattern on that side. Look at him here, he's kind of hesitating. Well, he says he's not open, I better try and get out of here. And by then it was too late. He who hesitates, it's second down and 13. A minute left, Wheel. still half time. Sorry.
That was a fouled up play, by the way. <laughs> All right, Bill. Second and long. Overshooting the intended receiver, it was Ron Robinson curling in from the right side. Nick Araki, number 79, also of Montreal, was in the area as well. That'll bring up third down. Big edge for the West Division in. Accumulated first downs here in the first half. Now we'll have Bernie Ruoff in to try a 55-yard field goal. See if he has any better luck. Conrad Holloway will hold for him. Of course, Pankratz has been doing the holding for Kennard. And he's hit both of his attempts very low. Good. Oh, no. Certainly trying to establish a field goal record here somewhere this afternoon with the length of these attempts. Ruoff gets it up. Just underneath the crossfire, Daryl Moyer returns it. Moyer of the Stampeders finds the sidelines and is finally forced out by Nicaraki at about the 21-yard line. So with about 33 seconds remaining in the second quarter, the West has the ball and a three-point lead. 26-yard return by Moyer. Hey, get it in the field goal. I like Cal's yeah, style. He isn't sitting Cal on needs it. to hurry up offense. And that's a waste of time, that is. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, Frank, there are more plays being made up in the sidelines here than you will see in any football oh, game. I'm sure. Tom Scott takes the pass, steps out of bounds to stop the clock. That's at the 34. Gain of eight, second down and two. 29 seconds left. Second and short, second and short. 90 post, right? Oh, okay. 90 post. Want to go for a big one here? 90 posts, of course, that means... We're going to go. Short yardage, we're ready to go. Probably Merv Fernandez, right. one of the wide receivers, one, yeah. running toward the goal post. Ray Krause, first down, and a big play. He broke a couple of tackles, and Ray Krause takes it deep into Eastern Division territory. Finally stopped at the 32-yard line by Felix Wright of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. 44-yard gain by Ray Krause. Well, what a great move after he caught that football. He's moved it all the way down to the 32. You heard Cal Murphy say, move it into field goal range. They've done just that. 16 seconds remaining. Watch once again, Cross running that football after he makes this reception. He was a secondary receiver here. McEachern and Nicholson collided, and that spun Cross free. James Murphy, number 12, who you saw on the right side of your screen there, was the primary receiver on that post pattern, but he was covered. You got 16. You got 16 seconds. We want a field goal. That's Murph over here, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, let's go. Well, the Kev said to go if you wanted to do that. He said there's no rhythm at all. That's why he's not hitting. You want to go with Louie here if we have to get one before the half? Hey, John. Okay. Let me think about it. Yo, 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 yo. Bob Vespiani, assistant coach of Winnipeg Blue Bombers, talking to Cal Murphy. Go. 357. 357. Stay six. Ball was trying to get rid of that football and he intended it for Pancras. It goes out of bounds with 10 seconds and that stops the clock. It'll be second down and 10 from the 32. Starting the Fans are calling for Pythagoras. <laughs> and Cal's still thinking about it. Well, they may try to run one more play before going for the field goal. There's 10 seconds showing on the clock. Watch that throwback. Huh? Duval just dumps it off to Krause again, and he once more gets away from Nicholson, and then is caught from behind near the 25-yard line by Franklin King. Now they'll go for the field goal attempt, and Kenner comes back in, and now it is 
not a favorable decision. That is not Lou they're chanting. No, now they're booing Murphy, no question about it. Canada's missed two previous attempts, although they were from over 50 yards out. One was 52, one was 56. This one will be from 33. This will be the last play of the first half. Pankrat's doing the holding. You better not miss this one. <laughs> Does not. Kenner drills it between the uprights. And the West will head to the locker room with a 13-7 lead over the East Division All-Stars. so low. Oh, the holder. Still discussing the field goal situation for the West Division, of course, with a new holder. As you heard them explain, the timing is off a bit, but Kennard managed to click on that one. He's one for three in the opening half. So the two teams will head to the locker room here at the 1983 Players Association All-Star Game. The only touchdown scored by the West by Dave Kersinger as he fumbled Ray Carlson, or he recovered Ray Carlson's fumble in the end zone, and the only touchdown for the East Division, a beautifully thrown pass from Chris Isaac to Terry Greer. From BC Place Stadium in Vancouver, the 1983 Players Association All-Star Game. The West leads the East 13-7. We'll return and look at the first half statistically. You see where the West had a big lead over the East in first downs and in total yards, 273 to 139. I'd like to point out that it's not mentioned there, Frank, no penalties in that first half. It was extremely well played first half, for, as you heard the coaches say, only two days of practice. So it'll be the East Division. Bernie Ruoff kicking off to get this third quarter underway from the 45-yard line where Ruoff will kick it. Crawford and Richie Hall, the deep men. Ruoff aims it to the near side. This will be Crawford, number 28 of the BC Lions from the nine-yard line. Crawford finds a bit of an opening, gets out to the 19, where he's tackled by William Mitchell of the Argonauts. A 57-yard kickoff return of 11. The West with a six-point lead over the East as we get the third quarter underway. And Roy DeWalt will stay in the ballgame at quarterback for the Western Division. Number nine from the BC Lions. Warren Moon started the game and then was replaced by DeWalt during the second quarter. Kelly and Fernandez are the wide receivers. DeFrance and Scott inside. Feger and John Henry White, the running backs. On first down from the 19. DeWalt goes quickly to Brian Kelly, and he is forced out of bounds by Leroy Paul of the Argonauts, very close to a first down up at the 30-yard line. Dale, I'm wondering if we can get an update from Peter Young down at the Western bench there uh, as far as Warren Moon is concerned. He did say that he was slightly injured in that first half, so maybe Peter can find out for us if he's going to be back in this ballgame. I have Pat Clayton, the bomber therapist, with me right now, who's acting as the West therapist uh, with me, Frank, and uh, tell us the Warren Moon situation, Pat. Well... In the uh, second quarter, Warren uh, started to roll out, and he's pulled a muscle in the left lower side of his back. Uh, we're reluctant to put him back in this ball game at this point in time. He's pretty sore, and it's it's quite stiff. So unless something happens to Roy DeWalt, we have likely seen the last of Warren for the day. Yeah, but I've recommended that we might put Scotty in after the way he threw that last ball to be our backup quarterback. <laughs> Everybody's trying to get into the act today. <laughs> oh, we just saw DeWalt try to go long to Mervyn Fernandez. The ball was thrown out of bounds. I'm not sure if somebody hit him just as he released the ball or not, but it brings up second down and 10 from the 30. Thank you, Peter, for that report as well as Pat. Two. Pressure from Greg Marshall, the outstanding defensive player, and the waltz pass intended for John Henry White. Really nowhere near him. He got hit as he released it that time. It'll bring up third down. William Mitchell almost picks off his second interception from Roy DeWalt, and you saw good pressure by the Eastern Ball Club as Greg Marshall, the outstanding defensive player in Canada in 1983, got in there and hurried Roy DeWalt. Lou Pasagli will come in the ballgame now to kick it away been an interesting first 30 minutes plus at this first players association all-star game in a long long time dale i've uh, i've enjoyed myself so far so have i first postseason all-star game is louis, louis is gonna take off. off oh no he decides to kick it he had 10 yards to go for the first down and he gets the kick away and it goes out of bounds at the east division 48 yard line franklin king number 61 of the argonauts 
was right there with Pasaglia and may have not got too far anyway. 32-yard kick. That was Franklin. Well, Franklin, very heads-up play of former BC Lion number 61 out there this afternoon. Good job. Good job. You hear Al Bruno, his coach, congratulating the sideline. 82, quick out, on two, ready? Conrad's back in at quarterback for the East. Yeah, quick out. <laughs> I, think, I think he's telling the defense, too. <laughs> Hudson! Hudson! This time, Steve Dennis had a shot at an interception and just managed to get his left hand on it. Dennis, of course, was beaten in the first half by Greer for a 65-yard touchdown. Let's listen again to Conrad. Let's go. 70, double post. Johnny flatten up. On two. Ready? Huh? Double. Two. Down. Set. Hut. Hut. Second and ten. Oh, James yeah. Parker is there again. James Parker is having himself a big day. 43-yard line, loss of five, and it brings up a punting situation for the East Division. Conrad just didn't have time to find an open receiver that time. Oh, man under two. Oh. And, then, and I guarantee you run the, the jet and your backs are going to come across underneath over there. That will come wide open. Which one signed here? Luloff again hangs it high. Richie Hall at the 25 steps out of bounds at the 29-yard line. The West is leading the East 13-7. That was a 42-yard punt that time. But we're coming back in just a moment. Dale, one of the real veterans of covering Canadian Football League foot games is Bill Good Sr. from Vancouver here. And Bill is covering his 43rd or 44th year of CFL football. Well, you can count better than I can, Frank, but it started back in Regina when Dean Griffin was the coach back then. A lot of people will remember him. About 1939, 1940. Bill, I haven't been around quite as long as you have, but I have seen this game for about 25 years, and I think the players have improved generation after generation year after year Frank. not just generation after generation year after year and i think it's a remarkable thing today that all of these players some of them with everything to lose and nothing to gain showed up for their own show like this it's just a, a fun afternoon and uh the, the players are so good it's just a treat picking out one or two and watching them individually you know one of the things bill i, I really want to emphasize to the public is the fact that these, this players association is doing a lot of charitable work as well not just putting this game on for themselves I think we have a lot of fine people playing football right now. Not only good football players, Frank, but they're, they're good citizens and good individuals, and I think it's a credit to the Canadian Football League. Bill, we hope to see you around for another 43 years covering this game. I'll just take them uh, 10 years at a time. I can get another 30, and I'll be happy. Thanks, partner. Greg Seeger makes the catch on the pass from Roy DeWald, who was in big trouble from Franklin King, and Daryl Nicholson was there to stop Seeger right at the 30-yard line, a gain of a little bit. It'll bring up third down. While you were talking to Bill, and you look at Greg Figures' catch again, Frank, we saw probably one of the better hits of the season that Ken McEachern laid on James Murphy to break up a pass play for the Western Division. McEachern really put the shoulder into Murphy. Right now, they have to punt the ball away. Neither one of these safeties are bashful. Ken McEachern, of oh. course, in the East, and Paul Bennett in the West, number 27. They'll hit you. Here's Basaglia to punt. Nice powering punt by Pasaglia. Fields from Hamilton at his 33. Gets out across the 40 to about the 45, 46 yard line. A 12 yard return by Fields after a 48 yard kick. And the East Division now has the football with 11.37 remaining here in the third quarter. West leads it 13 to 7. All the scoring in the first half. Let's go, here we go. Let's go up. 70, screen to the halfback right, on two, ready? 70, of course, refers to your protection, but as you heard, they're going to try to screen right no. to the short side of the field. Johnny Shepard, unable to hold on to it. Dale, you talk about the hit that 
James Murphy received. Uh, the Western bench has got some problems here. Uh, not only is Warren Moon out of the ball game, but Brian Kelly is also gone for the rest of this ball game with a sprained ankle. Harry Skipper, one of the fine quarterbacks in the CFL from the Montreal Concord. Harry, it's really an honor, I know, to play in this All-Star game, and you're representing the Concord here. Yes, uh, I was surprised, you know, that I made all this, so I'm just happy to be here. You seem to be hitting a little harder. What's going on? Did you have a talk to at halftime? Well, you know, things are getting kind of tight now, so we need uh, a little harder to win this game. Holloway in Go trouble. Him. Max Moore has him helped up by Tony Norman. A sack and a loss of about two yards on the play, and so the Eastern Division unable to move the ball. Once again, it's third down. We had a little dealing going on that they've been talking about defensively there. Dave Fennell and Mac Moore doing a cross of that defensive line. And, of course, Mac Moore is the one that came loose. What a fabulous year he's had. Number 78, you see Dave Fennell getting in there first of all, but then 78 making the sack finally on Conrad Holloway. Mac Moore, of course, led the BC Lions in sacks in 1983 with 15 of them. The West has now picked up five sacks none for the east paul bennett on the return there is a penalty flag down for the first time this afternoon no yards will be charged against the eastern division the west leads it by six over the east here in the third quarter and we're coming right back to bc play stadium you see him okay let's get a call let's go lucky 80 draw and one ready it's first down for the West, 41-yard line. Let's go! 397! 397! Let's go! For John Henry White, number 20, the handoff from DeWalt, wrapped up immediately by William Mitchell, number 39, from the Toronto Argonauts. Very little gain on the play. Ten sixteen remaining here in the third quarter. Here's a look at the linebackers. What a great job of filling by Nicholson, number 72, as well as Mitchell, 39. Pretty good blocking his line of scrimmage, but he did not pick off his linebacker. West Division coach Cal Murphy looks on. 387. There it goes. Another penalty play. James Murphy. Out across the 45, near the 47-yard line. Glenn Weir, number 64, from Montreal, making the tackle along with Greg Marshall, number 66. Procedure call. call against the what, Western what, what, squad. They may well refuse that penalty because that was well short of a first down. Procedure. West, no end. Declined. Third down. But well, Rick explained it to you. The decision will be to decline the penalty and with 9.49 remaining in this third quarter the West will kick it away the Saglia's punt Brazley number two waits for it 13 yard line on the return Brazley is near the 35-yard line by John Henry White, number 20 from the BC Lions. A 50-yard punt and a return of 22 yards. I'll tell you one thing, that John Henry White's a guy that does not know how to hit you easy. He just knocks him down. Watch this hit by number 20. Boom. Right here. Ray Strong, of course, joined the BC Lions as the other running back this year, and they probably have the two best blocking backs, as far as that's concerned, in the Canadian Football League. John Henry White's been right up there for years, in my opinion. First down from the 34-yard line, Parker with the rush, gets the pass away to Johnny Shepard. Once more, the rookie running back has trouble holding onto the football. It'll bring up second down. Really strange deal because Johnny Shepard had a great year as a receiver this year in addition to running a football. He caught 58 for 583 yards and four touchdowns. Shepard in total offense, 2,390 yards. That's running, pass though. receiving, and pick up return. Out, in, and you got the post. On two, ready? All right, they're going to run an out pattern on the left side, in on the right side, and then a post pattern by Terry Greer. Set. Cut. 
got time, and this one is nowhere near the intended receiver, Ron Robinson, number eight. Holloway, very slow in getting up. He's still down. Was Robinson running that post pattern and not Terry Greer, as we thought? Who said they were hitting easy? Hey, think about oh. your reverse to Fernandez. Uh, on Arsenal reverse? Down on Arsenal reverse. Right. Okay. Okay, but get the ball to Fernandez. Right, okay. Oh. You know, one of the nice oh. things I heard Cal Murphy say yesterday after the press conference was over, when you start talking about some of these guys as individuals, not as, as talented football players, but he said, you know, I really think that Roy DeWalt is a fine, fine person. It's kind of nice to, uh, to know that those relationships are built over this past week. Exactly. Warren Moon was saying the very same thing about an hour before game time. Uh, he's just thoroughly enjoyed spending the last four days with these guys that he's always playing against. Bernie Ruoff again hangs it high. Richie Hall on the return puts his head down at the 30-yard line. You know, I think there's a big advantage, too, Dale, from a coach's point of view of coaching in this game because if it ever comes down to the point in the future of a trade or considering that talent, uh, your personal knowledge of these players as people, I think, could be the deciding factor. In other, in other words, whether you want to give up to certain people to get guys that you know can really play and are your kind of people. That's a good point. That was a 50-yard punt once again by Bernie Ruoff and a return of five yards. Go! Total passing this afternoon between the two teams. John Henry White trying the left side of that offensive line finds a lot of running room. He takes it out across the 35 to about the 37-yard line, running right behind left guard Roger Alday. He wants short yardage. Cal Murphy trying to get a message into Roy DeWall. I think they want to try that reverse. Oh, I know, but... Uh... This time he'd like Fernandez to have the football, though. Last second down and three from the 37. 397. 397. John Henry White again. Trying to go around the right side, and he's near the 40-yard line, which will be very close to a first down. John Henry White starting today for the West in place of the injured Willard Reeves of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. What a rookie year Willard Reeves had for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Unfortunately marred by that injury in the last quarter of the season, but he'd have easily gone over 1,000 yards had he remained healthy for the entire year. Three of the four starting running backs in this ballgame today were rookies. James Murphy, the intended receiver, DeWald overshoots him right at the West Division bench. Second down and 10 coming up. Fernandez looked like he was wide open on the far side. CFL Players Association caps predominant here today. <laughs> I don't think she wants to put it all the way on her head and mess up her hair there. Frank, I think you'll appreciate this, but I was just talking to Conbridge Holloway, and he was hit, as you know, pretty hard, and he's hurting, you know, that is, he has many times through the season, but he shakes it off and keeps going. But he is a little bitter. He thinks that the boys are coming in and piling on him a little bit, and this is not the way you should play all-star football. DeWalt. Chris DeFrance, first down for the West, 52-yard line. Daryl Nicholson, number 72, making the tackle defensively for the East. I think, Bill, in the same vein that uh, James Murphy uh, could counter after the hit by Ken McEachern. Well, it works both sides, which means the boys are starting to go for the win here. This isn't just, hey, we've had a good time here together all week. Let's be kind to each other. Very hard to play this football game uh, half speed or even three-quarter speed. You've got to go after them. Go, 397, 397. Let's go. DeFrance again. First down once more for the West. Now at the East 42 and a half yard line. Well, I'll tell you what, that DeFrance just looks like he has those soft hands, Dale, a 15 yard pickup, but <laughs> you get an opportunity to see him a lot in your hometown of Regina. And he looks very, very sure-handed. He's the kind of guy that will make the sensational catch for you as well as the easy catch right there. Look how soft and easy he catches that football. Well, uh, and we have the, uh, the, uh... the Walt going for Fernandez. Knocked away by Harry Skipper, number 26. Well, how many times have PC Lion fans seen that turn into six points? 
sets a little higher. Mervin can go up with that great leaping ability. Skipper gets back there just in time to bounce that football all around, and Fernandez cannot make the reception. It'll be second now in 10 yards, and go right. 90 in on one, ready? Need your sprint hey, left, I believe. 298. 298. Let's go. Pick it up. Fernandez. First down for the West, working against Terry Skipper once more. There was nothing the defender could do to break that one up. The ball was perfectly hey, thrown. 14-yard gain. Let's run the red move. Go ahead, Arch. Hey, what? Red boot 68. Hey! Yeah. Watch this throw. I want CFL fans across the country to know something that's pleased me a lot before the ball game and talking to Merv Fernandez. He is signed with the BC Lions right through the 1986 season. Boy, is that ever good news. Exciting football player. The East has the football. Franklin King of the Toronto Argonauts comes up with the fumble recovery after Gary Doolin of Ottawa, number 68, had put the pressure on from behind on Roy DeWalt and knocked the ball loose. I'll tell you something, Dale. It's getting a little mean in there. Watch your old buddy Roger Aldag from the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. <laughs> I think they're no ignoring a little bit of that holding. He's working with Gary Doolin, and he pulled him right down there. Doolin recovered, and he's the one that got the in and hit DeWalt. Hey, he's going to hold him. He should have held him a little longer. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> On set. Ready? 82. 82. Quick out. Nick Karaki, the big inside receiver from the Montreal Concords, takes the pass from Conrad Holloway, his first catch of the afternoon, and he's close to a first down out at the 44. Boy, take it up. Take it up. First down. Is that a bit of a, a mismatch? Here we go. Karaki <laughs> at 240 pounds. Let's go. Gets the stick at 165. <laughs> 23. Scissors at four. 83 scissors at four on two. Ready? That'll be a run to the left side, I believe. On two. Down! Hit! Hunt! Hunt! Skip Walker ran into his center, Larry Titley, bounced off of him and a couple of tacklers to pick up five yards out to the 49. James Parker finally stopped him. Things like that. More dumpling. It's a 13-7 ball game with 70, the West leading. Get deep. 70 all heard back divide. And you delay middle. On two. Ready? You back delay divide middle. Okay. Mean each of them go out to their own Down. side. Skip Walker. James West puts the hit on him and stops him short of the first down at about the 52. Punt it, punt it. Bernie Ruoff, the punting unit, comes in. Third and about two. There's another guy that doesn't know how to hit you a little bit, James West. We saw him in the first quarter put the hit on the goal line on Howard Field. And a punt return stopping the East at their own one yard line. Ruoff has punted exceptionally well this afternoon. 47.6 yard average. Paul Bennett from the six. Wrapped up immediately. Darrell Wilson of the Argonauts stops him right at about the eight yard line. 255 remaining third quarter. 52 yard punt by Ruoff. There's our score. We're coming right back. Isaac, Frank Rigney, Peter Young, Bill Stevenson, the entire CTV crew back live at BC Place Stadium in Vancouver. And the West leads the East 13 to 7 in this Players Association All-Star Game. 255 remaining in the third quarter. Tony Norman of the Bombers, he's had himself a good afternoon. You know, it's been an exciting week for these CFL All-Stars, uh, East and West. And 
I'd like to compliment the fans that have supported CFL football throughout the year. The last couple of weeks have been packed houses here. We're not quite packed this afternoon, but we certainly are building from a very strong base to have this All-Star game continue. And we're very happy to tell you that the All-Star game for the next couple of years at least will be right here on the CTV National Network. And right here at D.C. Place Stadium as John Henry White breaks it out across the 35 to about the 37, 38-yard line, 14-yard gain. Good block by Dave Kersinger, number 69 of the Calgary Stampeders, setting John Henry White loose. Ken McEachern making the tackle. Just over two minutes remaining here in the third quarter. All the scoring in the first half. James Murphy, the Bombers. Harry Skipper has him wrapped up, but Murphy drags him out to about the 48. Be very close to a first down. Yeah, you know, they've got Bob Poley in their left offensive guard now, who normally is a center for the Riders, having Roger Alday out. Watch what he does now to Gary Doolin. He chops him down. That's one of the blocks that I thought they were not going to use. Watch it. Going down low on his legs. That's the way people can get hurt. They had agreed not to do that, but I guess Bob forgot on that one. Well, Frank, do you notice that maybe the tempo is picking up a little bit? And by the tempo, I mean just the ferocity of hitting and reverting right, to the things Billy. they do during normal games. That's right. 397. There it goes. Second and short. DeWall just throws it away. He had big pressure from Rick Silvietta, number 75, and he just had to get rid of it. So it'll bring up third and short. They'll go Did for it. Did you see it. who his intended That was Glenn Jackson out there. Jackson. That's right. Glenn Jackson, who came in there on a short yardage play. Obviously, Roy just trying to throw that football away after he had nobody open. He's trying to hit Murphy deep on the right side. Glenn Jackson, open. of course, has an knee injury, and he wasn't expected to play that much. Big pressure by Sovieta. The West obviously going to gamble with this third and less than a foot. Go! 357! 357! Both offensive guards took off before the snap of the football. We have a lot of finger pointing going on. It is a procedure call against the I West. Think, I think it was Leo Blanchard, the right offensive guard, that jumped first. Lou Pisaglia will come into front, uh, Frank and Dale, but what uh, might be interesting later in this football game, Cal Murphy's also indicated to Lou that he will do the place kicking from now on. So if a field goal situation comes up, procedure. it will be Lou. West, number 59, third down repeater. Number 59 for the West is Leo Blanchard of the Eskimos, so that brings up third and long, and now Pasaglia will have to punt. 113 remaining third quarter. Three return men, Skipper, Field, Brazley. Fields, 20-yard line. Fumbles the ball, and the West has got it. Looks like Daryl Moyer of the Stampeders got on that loose football. I think it was Bob Foley that caused the fumble. First down for the West at the East 30. Daryl Moyer, the safety of the Calgary Stampeders. Foley, 57, pulled the ball out. Moyer got it. Again, the Stampeders very key in this football game. James West was down there very quick and missed the tackle initially, but made him turn back to the inside. Into the last minute of this third quarter, and now the West is threatening inside the East 30-yard line. The West Division leads at 13 to 7. Hey, hey. The ball had all kinds of time, good coverage downfield, and finally the front four for the East got there. Rick Moore, number 76, was there for the Argos. Greg Marshall, 66 of Ottawa, the two defensive ends. Certainly a lot of time to throw this football, just nobody open downfield. Franklin, Franklin King, King was 61. First sack against the Western quarterbacks this afternoon. Five sacks against the East. Second down at 16. This may be the last play of the third. The wall. Caught by Gary Doolin and thrown back again. This time they'll spot the ball near the 48. A penalty flag down. We're going to have a holding call against the West, but I'm sure it'll be ignored because that loss is going to be close to 12, 14 yards. They have pretty well put it out of field goal range now. 
Although the first down started at the 29-yard line of the East. That is the final play of the third quarter. So with the West leading 13-7, we'll take this time out. Well, well, if I can get Al Bruno back off the playing field because he's going to get a penalty if I don't. Al, what are you yelling about out there? What was the problem? Look for everything. Watch the, watch the pass. Watch, watch the trick play. Uh, Direct snap to the back, up back on the puck formation. Look you, for everything. I do notice that there's a little more desire in there. They're hitting oh, yeah. the tighter now. That they started. Oh, really, oh, oh, oh. Whole new ball game. Whole new ball game. Boy. Now, are you going to do anything different here because you're trailing now? You got to get back in this game. Oh, they want to keep throwing the ball. Oh, 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 oh. Louis kicked it out on the one. Stop the fumbling. Thank you, Al. Lou, Lou. <laughs> Forty-seven yard. Punt that was perfect. It went out of bounds at the one. Hey, Murph, you gonna let him keep punting? <laughs> one yard line. Look at this. Howard Fields is gonna let it go through the end zone. It looked hopefully. like it was going over. He got a great bounce. A little backspin. Oh, what a perfect kick. No, Paglia. Well, like he's going to 50.1 yard average. Yeah. But the ball comes right back to you. Well, tell them. Okay. And they'll have only one guy back. You can kick wherever you want. Last time the East was at the hey, one yard line. Come here now. The West okay, got a safety out of it. Chris Isaac in his quarterback for the East. Another safety. Oh. <laughs> That's the quickness of Mac Moore. Johnny Shepard stopped in the end zone. Another two points for the West. Watch the quickness of Mac Moore coming down to the inside. That's Dan Peroni from the Toronto Argonauts. And let's take a look at it once again. Moore just making, I mean, Mac Moore just making that quick move down to the inside. Watch how quick he is. Boom, off the football. Got that inside position and got two points for the West. I have not, I don't remember, Dale, the last time I saw a football game where there were two safety scored. Nope. I did, I it's shouldn't big. say that. In 1965, we lost the Drake up the Hamilton Ticats and we gave up intentionally gave up free safety so <laughs> I do remember uh -huh. I think the best line about that punt came from Greg Marshall when he came out the field he said that guy's using a nine iron so that'll mean the East will have to kick off following the two point safety thanks to Mac Moore number 78 of the BC Lions you give uh, Louie one of those points and, and Mac Moore one that's right yeah <laughs> It's now a 15-7 ball game. Crawford on the return from the 20-yard line. Crawford goes out of bounds with it, out at the 43. 24-yard return. We have 14.06 remaining in the ball game. Three-quarter stats. West building up a bigger edge now in total offense. 366 to 157. You know, one of the surprising things there is the East has only put the ball in the air 15 times, the West 41. That shows you a little bit about time of possession, too. Exactly. If we had total plays up there as well, I'm sure there'd be a big edge for the West as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Listen. Ray Krause, number 32 of the Stampeders. Another penalty flag is down. Krause has enough for a first down. He's into Eastern Division territory to the 51-yard line before he's finally forced out of bounds. You're going to have holding on the West, and I believe it was Dave Kersinger, number 69, trying to help his teammate out. Watch, he's a left offensive tackle. I believe he's the one that's going to be called for holding. <laughs> yes, David, it was you. Out of the ball game for the West. Holding, West number 69, first down repeated. Exactly as Frank called it. Warren Moon has a pulled muscle, and Brian Kelly, like a sprained ahead. ankle, they're out of the ball game. Okay. Go right. First down over again. Chris DeFrance gets some of that back. With a gain of close to 15 yards, so that's first and 20. Dale, you were talking about Warren Moon's injury. It's interesting to note, and I think the football fans will be interested to know, that he took out an insurance policy on himself for $1 million for this game, just in case he did happen to come up with a serious injury. 
Well, the injury he came up with, of course, is not serious. We don't believe just a little bit of a pulled muscle in the back, but I think keeping him out of the ball game is very appropriate at this point. Second down and five. The France again, his sixth catch of the afternoon. 50-yard line, first down for the West. Christopher France could be a candidate for a star of the game. Still, they have let a few things get by, and I think that Leo Blanchard on the right side there. Don't you think he's offside just a little bit? <laughs> well, it looked like the ball was at least exactly. a foot behind him as he lined up there. But they're being reasonably lenient with the lack of practice these people have had. And I agree with it. Lack of practice. They put on a pretty decent show. I mean, some of these guys haven't played football in a month. That's right. Ray Krause. That's one of them. He's had a tremendous afternoon. Sure has. Second effort again from Ray Krause. 40-yard line, first down for the West. Whoever gets that Calgary job is going to be very pleased with having Ray Krause in that backfield. And I understand, Dale, it's no news-breaking item, but Steve Barano, the defensive coordinator, does such a fine job here for the BC Lions as one of the candidates for that Calgary Stampede job. And deservedly so. He did a great job this year. He's definitely the most prominent name that you hear. First down for the West. Take over a young football team in Calgary. It's got a lot of talent. Good football club. They're very, very close to being uh, okay. a competitive football club. And uh, as old Jocko said, we're sorry to see him leave the Canadian Football League scene. If he does, it's just a matter of a bad snap that they outcoach me. <laughs> <laughs> First, be interesting to see what happens with Al Bruno and Hamilton and Jack Parker and Edmonton as well. First down play from the 40. James Murphy, another first down, and Roy DeWalt has his offense on the move now. Leroy Paul puts the hit on Murphy inside the 30. I don't blame Leroy Paul for giving that young man a little room. He can fly. He's got the quick speed. 11.40 remaining. First down, baby. Good. First down. Come on, let's go. The Walls has now completed four in a row. First down, quick snap now. Good. Fernandez was open, couldn't squeeze it. The Walls stepped up, almost stepped right up into the arms of Rick Moore. Two kind of a knuckleball to Fernandez, but certainly a catchable football. That is Willard Reeves of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. From Sibby's there, who would very much like to be in this football game. Rookie of the year in the Western Division of the CFL. He'll have competition for his job next year, too, fellas, because they've signed James Sykes to a three-year contract. Sykes had a great finish for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Save. 357. 357. The draw to Ray Krause on second and ten. He's wrapped up immediately. Franklin King got an arm on him, and then William Mitchell finished him off at about Here the 21. Here Louie. Louie. Trevor Kennard was one for three in the first half in field goal tries, and that'll be Pasaglia. That'll give it a try. Fickle fan. <laughs> Way to tell him, Murph. <laughs> He's quite the showman, isn't he? I'd say this is one of the most popular PC Lions in history. That's right. Tell Murphy, yesterday we were at the press conference. There's a tour went by. He joined the tour. <laughs> <laughs> 32-yard field goal attempt. Pankrat holds for the Baglia. It is good. Well, that would have been good from 52. And the West increases its lead to 18-7 over the East with 10.44 remaining. And we'll be back with more fourth quarter action in a moment. That is from here. Well, James has had some hamstring problems the last month or so, and we're just stretching him out. He's a little bit tight in this end of this quarter. We don't want him to tear it. Nothing serious, though. No, no. We're just stretching him out. By the look in his face, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> James Murphy being worked on the sideline by trainer Pat Clayton. East first down, 35-yard line. West leads it, 18-7. Ron Johnson of the Tiger Cats makes his first catch of the afternoon up at the 50. It's good for a first. David Shaw, the former Tiger Cat, now Winnipeg Blue Bomber, puts the hit on him. Gain of 15. I'll tell you, I've been impressed with Chris Isaac throwing the football here in the time he's spent in this ball game. Watch the snap on this ball. Right on the money. 
what Terry Greer mentioned to you at halftime. He didn't know that Chris could throw the ball that far, but he's got a pretty good arm. Known they, as a running quarterback, but Frank, they've been kidding him about putting something special <laughs> on the arm like DMSO or something. That's why he's throwing it so well. <laughs> Wants to go oh deep boy. for Robinson. And a good coverage downfield by Richie Hall of the Stampeders, number 26. <laughs> Neil, I got to show you this one. Kevin Powell, a left offensive tackle, a big guy from the Ottawa Roughriders. I believe that that's James Quick Parker he's blocking on. Watch what happens. Stop it right there. You think maybe Parker's about to get around him? Watch what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, Tony Norman got quite a reaction, too, because he jumped up and threw his flag down as if it was a penalty for holding. Oh, that's right. It was Tony Norman, right, instead of Parker. The first ball for Paul. <laughs> Second down and ten. Ron Johnson again. He has another first down for the East. And once more, it's David Shaw he's working against. And he has a gain of close to 14 yards. And once more, a fine throw by the young, diminutive quarterback of the Ottawa Rough Riders. Zip! First, the only touchdown of the afternoon for the East so far has been a Chris Isaac to Terry Greer bomb of 65 yards. That was in the first half. Don't go. It's only the third first down of the second half for the East. Two of them here in this drive. The draw, Denny Ferdinand, the young man from the Montreal Concords, is tripped up back at the 50, the 49. They'll spot it for a loss of two. James Parker. Second down and 12 coming up. All right, here we go. Walker in, Shepard out. Okay. Cool. 70, all hook on the first down, Ray. Yeah. Flat, 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 flat. Everybody hooks. Ball tipped right to Ron Robinson by James West. First down, East tackled by Daryl Moyer, 30 yard line. James West, number 58, should have had the interception. Watch this. You see the little curling pattern to the inside by each one of the receivers, and as you saw in the deflection, put the ball down inside the 30-yard line, so the East is threatening to get right back in this ball game. I think the most impressive of the two All quarterbacks right. for the East. 24 sprint draw on set, right? Is your draw once again, which did not work last time with Ferdinand as Parker stopped it. This time a sprint draw. Good. Johnny Shepard looking to get outside. Danny Bass cracks him down from behind. The all-CFL middle linebacker stops him after a gain of four and a half yards at the 25. Dale and Frank, we have Skip Walker out of the lineup momentarily because of cramps. Okay, it's second down, 7.25 remaining. Let me just give you uh, some of the uh, all-CFL lineups. Moon, the quarterback, Walker and Shepard, the running backs. Greer and Kelly, the outside receivers. Robinson and Scott, the inside receivers. Bonk, the center, the guards, Phillips and Blanchard. Powell and Blaine, the tackles, the Saglia, the kicker, and putter. Isaac hit just as he released that football by James Parker, and it falls well short of the intended receiver, and it'll bring up third down defensively. If our microphone still works after that hit, it'll be a miracle. You're right about that. Here's another look at it. Very vulnerable position for the quarterback as he takes that shot. Defensively, the defense for it? The all okay. CFL team, Moore and Doolin, okay, the tackle, win. Marshall and Moore. 81 Street, on set, ready? Go now. Hit it. Down! Six! This is third down and five. Into the end zone for Keith Baker, a little too far. Baker got the inside position on the corner, Steve Dennis. Goes incomplete, the ball goes over to the West. 23 remaining in the fourth quarter. The West has an 11-point lead over the East. Total offense so far this afternoon in the West, you see has gone over 400 yards, more than double the output for the Eastern Division offensively. Yeah, you know, while you're at it, I'd like to hear the rest of those All-Canadians uh, on the defensive squad. I will just take a look now and see what Roy DeWalt can do on first down and 10 from the 25. 
for Fernandez. He goes high, but can't bring it down. Bass, the middle linebacker. Goldsmith and Fowler, the outside linebackers. Bennett, the safety. Crawford, one inside halfback. Grazley and Hall tied to the other inside halfback spot. Parker and Skipper, the corners. That's the all-CFL team for 83. Go right. It is hook first time. Ready? Come on, let's get it. Let's get it. Chris DeFrance, the intended receiver, covered very closely by William Mitchell, the linebacker from Toronto. That'll bring up third down for the West, and they'll have to punch the football away. DeWalt closing in on 300 yards passing this afternoon. And I don't blame him for looking for Chris DeFrance. I believe DeFrance has had seven receptions already today for close to 100 yards. Six for 89. All right, well, I was close. <laughs> well, if you had caught that one, you would have been right on. Lou out there to kick it away. Every time we run, it's a wide open. <laughs> Amazingly enough, they have a bit of a BC wave going here this afternoon. It's the Faglia punt. Carl Brazley at his own 49. Got some room along the sidelines and finally stopped at the West 50. The score, 18-7 for the West over the East. 553 remaining. It may not be a packed house, but it is certainly an enthusiastic house. They're, they are coming across with the BC wave. Something that the BC Lions fans have more or less invented here at BC Place this year. Hey, ready? Here we go, here we go. It's been a real fun one football game. Sprint wide, sprint wide, out and up. Oh, set. Ready? Cal Murphy told me in the Western final here that it was a big factor in that ball game because his quarterback could just not be heard in this place. More so than even the Great Cup. Two. Chris Isaac, the quarterback for the East, on first down, going deep for Ron Johnson, in between the coverage, touchdown East, great play. What a great throw by the youngster from Ottawa. Two, one, two. Hey. 50-yard score for the East, and that tightens things up. Ron Johnson on the receiving end. Ron Johnson pretty well covered, actually, back there by David Shaw, number 36, and lawyer of the Calgary Stampeders. Just a perfect throw by Isaac. I believe we heard Al Bruno say they're going to go for two points, but let's watch this throw once again. Quick break to Ferdinand, and watch the young quarterback step up here and throw in the run. Second right on the money. pass of the afternoon for Isaac. 65-yarder to Terry Greer in the first Wind half. Up. We'll isolate you. Hold oh, that, Ray. Whatever you want. 81. They're going to isolate Greer on the right side, and he can run whatever pattern he wants. Going against set. Steve oh, Dennis set. of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. There it is. Two points. All it's right. An Did they read Rogan. that perfectly. Beautiful read by young Isaac, and Greer just beat him badly to the inside. How would you like to try to cover that oh, guy one on one? Impossible. No, three points now, separating the two teams. Five and a half minutes remaining. There's a nice old shot from Freddie Fleming on uh, Terry Greer. That's impossible. You can't do that. <laughs> I'll say this, I'd get a new occupation if I was a cornerback. I had to cover him one for one. Good job, man. Good protection. Good protection. There you go, Ronnie. Yeah, while well, we have a little lull in the play here, we have just five minutes and 35 seconds remaining, but I'd like to say a very special thank you to you. The place you're working through with you throughout the 1983 season. And hopefully we'll be back because CTV will definitely be back in 1984 with. CFL football, we're looking forward to it. Appreciate that, Frank, and the uh, feeling is mutual, most definitely, and thanks to everybody here on the CTV crew, including Fred Fleming and Hugh Dunn, Gordano, Bob Blaze, who have been with us all season long. The kickoff from the east goes to Richie Hall of the Calgary Stampeders, and he returns it from the eight-yard line. He's got some room out to the 30. Chris, I think that was a great read, a great pass. Now, where did it come from, that pass to Johnson? Uh, well, that's something we put in, we were working on during the week, was just a sprint wide pass. We, home, we tried it on the out. Uh, last time we ran it and it wasn't there, so we wanted to try out and up, thinking we could get the corner to bite on it, but uh, Johnson had a nice route and he was open, so I just tried to get him the ball. Oh, great pass. Tell me, everybody's kidding you, saying we never knew you could throw that well. Yeah, a lot of guys told me they didn't think I could throw the ball that far or anything, but uh, I just told them just to be there, it'll be there. <laughs> All right, All right. Thank, you. thank you. First down from the 30-yard line. Three points separating the two teams now. James Murphy, the front tackle. Oh, he did uh -oh. the ball. Look out. Brazley forces him out of bounds inside the five. Boy, we saw this play so many times against the 
Eskimos in the semifinal, 76 yards for James Murphy. Well, I'll tell you what, if you're a quarterback, does that help your stat? He completed that for two yards, and Murphy ran it for another 74. What great speed, that great quickness. But Crazy also coming from a long way away, manages to save the touchdown. He gets to the four-yard line, but what a great play by James Murphy. Puts him over 100 yards thanks to 76 Very on quickly. Play. <laughs> this has been an exciting football game. We just had a touchdown by the East to narrow the gap to three points. Now the West first and goal from the East four-yard line. Fernandez goes in motion left. Kraus takes the pitch from DeWalt. Kraus is in the end zone. He's got himself a touchdown. So the West comes right back to regain his big lead. Well, he should have caught Kirsten to the dance. <laughs> Just a quick pitch to the right side, and Kraus uses his own strength and ability to get into that end zone. He just got there before McEachern pushed him back. What a quick turnaround as the Eastern Jimmy. Ball Club had come right back to within three points Jimmy. in the West, but boy, an exciting all-star wind-up to the CFL season. What up, Ron? All right, we'll have Trevor Kenner converting. John Pankratz doing the holding. It is good. It's now a 25-15 ball game. At, with 4.47, lots of time left. And here's Peter. Jimmy, good run. Uh, as somebody said, it was about a four or five yard pass. You turned it into 76. It was just a lot of wide open field, and I take it. You know, hey, that's my job. You had some problems with the hamstring, but yeah, it didn't seem nothing bothered problems. you there. It's bothering, but I just got a blanket out of my mind. It's a fun event. I'm having fun. It's nice that they punched it in for you. <laughs> oh, Ray, you did a great job. Thank you. I'll tell you, he's an athlete in pretty fine shape after that great run coming back and doing an interview that quick. You see Krause just barely getting that ball into the end zone, if he did. Just enough they to say he did. break the plane to the goal line. <laughs> what did we just do? 10-point lead now for the West, just under five minutes What did we do when I was over your side, baby? Kenner will Krause is referring to is Glenn Jackson, of course, of the BC Lions. Hey, Trevor! He wants Trevor to kick a field goal from there. Come on, huh? Johnny Shepard waits for it, 12-yard line. Shepard's got a bit of room, and he's out near the 40. You know, Dale, I think Bill Stevens was absolutely right. This ball game is built up from the opening, which was kind of slow, and the crescendo has picked up this quarter after quarter. This is an exciting football game now. Just a moment ago, Al Bruno's East Division squad within three points are now 10 hey, Was he really over? <laughs> <laughs> I think Al's got a monitor down there somewhere taking a look at the replay. I don't think he was over. Damn. Six. Chris Isaac has two touchdown passes here this afternoon. This one he screams to Skip Walker. Walker doesn't need a lot of blocking help to make yards, and he's fighting up to the 50-yard line. He's got a first down and a gain of 12. remaining. Just a great run by the outstanding rusher in the Canadian Football League the last two years. Gets away from almost everybody. Daryl Moyer, <laughs> James West, a pair of Stan Peters finally team up to bring him down. Over 60 yards for Skip Walker receiving Let's today. Let's go with 80, 2, in, out, on set, ready? There's your basic pattern, pass pattern, Greer coming across. Receiver Johnson down this side, breaking up. Keith Baker Six. lined up on the near side, now replacing Johnson. Almost picked off by David Shaw. Both Baker and Tolbert were in the area. I'm not sure who he was trying to get the ball to, but Shaw got in front of it. It'll bring up second down from the 50. I think it was actually to Keith Baker, number one, but the ball was underthrown.
school. 70. Twin right, 82 Street. Okay, let's go. Twin right, 82 Street. On set, ready? Twin right, 82 Street. They're going deep. Second down and 10. Down! Good! Looking for Ron Robinson. Did he get it before he stepped out of bounds? No, sir. They rule it an incomplete pass. Oh, one official says yes, the other says no. Well, they'll have to start this one out. 304 remaining. It's 25-15 in favor of the West. We'll be back in a moment. Very close to a completion as we look at this once again. Ron Robinson, number eight. Let's see if he stayed in bounds. Only needs one foot down. There's one. Ooh. I'd say that was a completion. I would, too. His and right I'll... foot was on the ground when that ball was caught. I think Al Bruno has pretty good reason to be a little upset of that one. 304 remaining. Because of that call, it's a third down punting situation. This is the All-Star Trophy, which will be presented to the captains of the winning team here this afternoon. Big rush from Parker. Ruoff cut around him, and an end over end punt. He gets it away to Richie Hall. Excellent job by Ruoff to get that ball away. 42-yard punt. Watch Parker coming right up the middle. You know, Dale, in well less than three quarters of this football game, Roy DeWalt has thrown for almost 400 yards in this ball game. Pretty impressive numbers for a guy who has to be given strong consideration as the offensive star here this afternoon. 10-4. 2.47 remaining in the fourth quarter. Ten-point lead for the West over the East. The draw to Ray Krause. Well, he's, he's had, had quite an afternoon, too. To say that, oh. Frank, and he's almost got a first down out of the 34-yard line. It is the first, and they spot it with the nose of the football right at the 35. East closed with it in three points here just a few moments ago, but the West quickly came back to regain a 10-point lead thanks to a 76-yard play from the wall to Murphy. And then Kraus put it in the end zone. Hand off again to Kraus. Gary Dillon put the stop on him, and not before he gained close to eight yards. Kraus is now carried. 10 times this afternoon, closing in on the 60-yard rushing mark. With one touchdown. Looks like he was on his way for a touchdown the first quarter, and then he fumbled it, but he fumbled it forward, fortunately, and Dave Kersinger, his teammate from Calgary, passed on it for the first touchdown in the end zone. Mervyn Fernandez gets around the corner and has another first down for the West. He's at the East 47. Mervyn upset with himself, but I don't think he should have been. He just made a great move to pick up an extra 10 yards. And Cal Murphy, I'll tell you one thing, has gained a lot of respect for this guy this week. What a great burst of speed he has, Cal says. 20-yard gain for Fernandez. Two minutes remaining in the ball game. 257. Set, Overthrows the France at the 30-yard line. Woof, Fernandez wide open about 10 yards further downfield. First postseason All-Star game since 1958 in Canada. Let's go right. 90 in on one, ready? On one, 90 and on one. Two, 257. 257. Marshall with the heat on the wall gets away, fires incomplete. Went right past a couple of intended receivers. One was Fernandez, the other was Chris DeFrance. 24 and 74, it'll be third down. Left to play here in the fourth quarter. Louis Pasagli is in the punt. 
Brazley and Skipper. Great pressure that time on DeWalt by Greg Marshall. Oh, he's not going to punt. He'll be trying a field goal. Pankrath doing the holding. It'll be close to a 55-yard effort. Just about exactly. Brazley takes it at about the seven-yard line. Stopped by Greg Fieger at about the 24, 25. Falls forward. He'll spot it at the 27, actually, with a minute 33 to go. Point lead for the West over the East. Chris Isaac has thrown a couple of touchdown passes. Going, 135, one sprint wide, come back on set. Ready? 135, sprint wide. Yeah. Set. Set. Greer is out of the ball game right now. Ben and Johnson, the receivers, set. wide out. Looking for Johnson, incomplete. Out of bounds when he made the catch. Second down and 10 from the 27. Just 128 remaining now. As you see, Johnson clearly out of bounds with that reception. He, of course, picked up the touchdown strike from Isaac a little earlier in this period to put the Eastern squad within three points of the West. Isaac, the second-year quarterback from Eastern Kentucky from the Ottawa Rough Riders, throwing deep, and it's almost picked off by Daryl Moyer from the Stampeders. Pass intended for Ron Robinson of the Montreal Concourse. I don't think Robinson has made a catch this afternoon. They've tried to go to him a couple of times. Larry Crawford of the BC one. Lions thought he had that interception. Moyer knocked it out of his hands, but good play by the safety of the Calgary Stampeders. be the 13th punt of the afternoon for Bernie Ruoff. Actually, we've been talking about the arm of Chris Isaac and him going deep this afternoon. He did hook up with Tyrone Gray during the regular season for the longest pass play of the year, a 91-yard touchdown right here in Vancouver late in the season. Richie Hall on the return has some room. Ken McEachern and William Mitchell of the Argonauts finally stop him just inside Eastern Territory. 45-yard punt and return of 16. Looks like Richie shaken up slightly on the play. 1-12 remaining. I think as he was pulled down from behind Dale, his right foot caught underneath him. What a great year this little guy's had in his rookie season in the CFL. Had a punt return for 74 yards and a touchdown during the regular season. And he averaged 11.2 yards per return. Had four interceptions, recovered two fumbles. Well, we certainly hope that that is not serious call. He, Pat Clayton, of course, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers working on that right knee. This game has been very happily free of injuries by and large, although we did see Warren Moon not able to come back in the ball game because of a pulled muscle in his lower back. Go! 257! 257! Reverse to Fernandez. Glenn Weir is there and Fuzzy makes the tackle back at the 45-yard <laughs> line. A 12-year veteran. Glenn Weir of the Montreal Concords, number 64. Big loss in the play, about 10 yards. The old reverse did not fool the veteran that time. No, it certainly did not. And he got good penetration. That was the key to his defensive move. Got inside Dave Kersinger, the staff Peters, and the loss is going to be almost exactly 10 yards. But there's your total offense for the day. And one, ready? And one. This is what the backs are now. Everybody's going deep. Four. Into the last minute of play. 357. There it goes. Second down and 20. Over the middle to Krause. And the linebacker, Rick Soietta, slows him up, and he's finished off by Franklin King, number 61. He gets back about seven or eight yards on that play, so it's third and 12. Now make sure this one goes 
in the corner. <laughs> out of bounds. First ball he did was put it out of bounds for you in the one yard line <laughs> earlier in this ball game. Wasn't that something, that 47 yard boot right at the one yard line? Perfect, and there wasn't a thing Howard Fields could do on the play. He thought it was going to bounce right into the end zone. It seemed to hit just an inch outside the goal line, kind of had some backspin on it, and went out of bounds at the one. Bit of a low snap to Pasaglia this time, and a driving punt. Then Fields back to the four. Reverse this time to Brazley. Brazley's got some speed. We saw it earlier, and getting over there to bring him down was Greg Fieger, number two. Oh, well, it's the 27. 21 seconds remaining. 10 point lead for the West over the East. The only punter in the game to ever average over 50 yards kicking a football, and he hit that one about 53 yards. So, what do you think now? The East will just put it up deep and see if they can put some more points on the board in the last 21 seconds? No reason to sit on it. Definitely not. <laughs> It's been a pleasure bringing this ball game to you. We hope you've enjoyed it across the CTV network. The first postseason players all-star game since 1958. Good. Good. Iraqi knocked down by Larry Crocker, number 28. Fourteen seconds left on the clock. And of course, it wasn't a jam-packed house here this afternoon, but I think the fans in attendance thoroughly enjoyed this football game, Frank, just as we've enjoyed being here as well. Time for a couple more plays. Clock is stopped on the incompletion. Fourteen seconds left. Keith Baker, the intended receiver, working against Steve Dennis and moving over there from the safety spot was Paul Bennett. Penalty marker down. I think maybe the quarterback was across the line of scrimmage before he let the ball go. That's it. Legal forward pass against the East. Seven seconds remaining. Third down against the East. Ten yards to go from the 27. This should be the last play of the ball game. Yeah. Down. Six. Nothing but white jerseys down there as he tries to go deep. It's picked off by the linebacker, James West, who got real deep to help out the secondary on that one. And that's it. The final play of the football game and the West has defeated the East by 10 points as you look at the interception by James West once more. The final score here at BC Play Stadium, the West 25, the East 15. The CFL on CTV will continue in a moment. This is the presentation of the All-Star Trophy to co-captain of the West Division team Warren Moon of the Edmonton Eskimos as well as Danny Bass of the Calgary Stampeders well maybe small consolation but the Grey Cup went east in 1983 the all-star game will stay here in the West Warren Moon as you see taking the trophy on behalf of the co-captains of the Western Conference all-stars And now, the Carnegie Team Sports Offensive and Defensive Game Stars. Both of them from the winning Western All-Stars, Roy DeWald, who threw for over 400 yards in this ball game, and Dave Pinnell for reasons that are not usual for a defensive tackle, an interception, and a safety. There are your Carlin O'Keefe All-Stars. This is the CFL on CTV that can be played halfway and they proved it here today in BC Place.
beautiful BC Place Stadium, the scene of the Players Association All-Star Game. The West defeating the East 25-15. Good night from Vancouver.